joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, fountain of living water, source of mercy, tender and mighty, you are clothed with majesty and splendor. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, satisfying the thirst of all living things, sustaining life in this community, nourishing and delighting us. We bless you for these gifts of water, for the Rock River and the Mississippi River, and for the wells and watersheds that nourish our ground and our farmland. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through water, a sign of your saving power. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your love flows through the water of baptism, joined in your life-giving word. Your well of mercy and cleansing flood, your sea of deliverance from death into life, your healing river washing sin away, your living water springing up to eternal life. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Your steadfast love fills the earth. Shower us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love. Clothe us in and all your people with grace. Embolden us to do justice. Bless us to love mercy. Guide us to walk humbly with you whom we thank and praise through Jesus Christ in unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of the Lord's robes filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above the Lord. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is the full of the glory of the Lord. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man with unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the suffering of the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The 29th Psalm. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with Christ so that we may also be glorified with Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jewish people. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the dominion of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the dominion of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know from where it comes or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses was lifted up by the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way, that God gave the Son, the only begotten one, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is Holy Trinity Sunday once again, and once again we find ourselves with gospel texts that make us wonder, what could this possibly have to do with the Holy Trinity? And yet there is, there is something profound and also deeply personal about today's gospel reading and the questions it raises and this commemoration of the Holy Trinity. I find myself standing in front of a stained glass window with Jesus and two other figures, likely Mary and Martha. And yet, seeing this image helps us think about something far more than just Jesus himself, which is probably exactly what Jesus was trying to get to communicate to Nicodemus in this gospel reading today. Nicodemus comes to Jesus asking Jesus by night for clarifications on the things that Jesus has been speaking publicly about since the beginning of his ministry. Nicodemus is trying to make sense of these things that seem so contradictory to one another. How can it be that one can be born from above? How can one end up entering into this relationship that seems so very different than what we have experienced before? How can God be whom we name God to be as both simultaneously divine and human? How can God be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Jesus provides to Nicodemus an answer which is one that even in our world today we seem to have such difficult time with. The paradoxical relationships of God and humanity. You see, so often, so often when we see things that seem contradictory, we end up 
tearing ourselves apart, trying to find one side that is right or one side has to be wrong, and rather than recognizing that there can be deeply held truths in all of that, that we can exist in paradox. We strive to be right rather than to be faithful. And that's where Jesus finds himself in this interaction with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a Pharisee, a teacher of the Jewish religious culture of the time. And Jesus, called rabbi, also a teacher, is engaging in the time-old interplay between understanding of faith and culture, understanding of faith and society, trying to sort through the theodicy of how God interacts with humanity. Something that we, whether we recognize it or not, do probably every day. Whenever we speak about God, we enter into this interplay using our words to proclaim deep and meaning and sometimes very confusing pieces of information. But are we doing it because we want to be right about God? Or are we doing it because we want to be faithful to the witness that we have of God? And those two things, I think, are something that we need to hold in tension because when we lean too far to one side or the other, then we end up becoming zealots for something not quite as faithful, do we? When we become so attached, so heels dug in the sand, ready to fight, are we open to who God is being revealed as? Or are we so, so set on who we believe God to be that God has to fit nicely in our own little box rather than letting God be God? I could probably have a little tirade about all of the different theologians of the past and even maybe even talk about St. Patrick and his relationships with those that he tried to talk to the reality of the Trinity. But ultimately, ultimately all those things will fall short if we ourselves don't have the grace to extend one another that God may be working in ways that are far larger than we have words. And that perhaps is the most faithful thing that we can say this day, that God is at work in things that are beyond what we can say and do. In fact, that's, that's almost what Jesus says to Nicodemus. <laughs> Jesus mentions to Nicodemus very truly we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? How can any of us truly enter into a relationship with one another to talk about what God is doing if we approach the conversation automatically assuming that one of us has to be right and the other has to be wrong. Truly, God is bigger than those arguments. Truly, how God is revealed is bigger than our preconceptions. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, may we be so willing to engage in conversation about what God has done and is doing in a way that extends grace, mercy, and love to fuller our understanding rather than convince someone else of what we think we believe. Amen.
I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And, and he, he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and ever shall be, thank you. We praise you for life, for love, for grace. We praise you for making all things new. Come, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, and transform our lives. We lift our prayers to you, trusting you. We pray, O oh God, for your church throughout the world. Revitalize and renew your church, that we all would be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Faithful God, your will be done. We give you thanks for all of creation. Grant us desire to tend to the earth, all plants, animals, and human beings. Faithful God, your will be done. We thank you for mental health care. We thank you for all who serve in the mental health profession. We thank you for their listening. We thank you for their questions. We thank you for their wisdom. And we welcome you to guide their work that all would be well. Would you bring forth healing through their good work? Faithful God, your will be done. We trust the Spirit to intercede for us. We trust your goodness and unending love. We present these requests, spoken and unspoken to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always. Enjoy it and share it. On behalf of Emmanuel, St. Paul, and St. John's Lutheran Churches, we give thanks for you and your continued support of gifts, time, and energy, and also your financial support. If it were not for the gifts that you share, we would not be able to provide the ministries that we have been and these opportunities to reach into your home, to provide the good news of Jesus Christ and the continued reminder of our partnership and companionship together as members of the body of Christ in this world. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his solitary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, And the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be with you, be upon you now and forever. Amen. O sovereign God, O matchless King, the saints adore, the angels sing. Sufferings, this 
passing tide under your wings I will abide and every enemy shall flee you are my hope and victory praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit three in one both in power Thy great descent has made me old. Your word, my heart, has welcomed home. Now peace like water ever flows. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, both in power. And praise the Spirit, three in one, clothed in power and in grace, the name above all other names, the name above all other names. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.